Hey guys, today I'm going to share my favorite trading tip from Magic the Gathering, and it involves land, lands in standard. So you need to accumulate as many of them as possible. So 20 is good, 40 is better, 80 is even better. Or you might even buy them online and then go to your local game store to trade them. Now why are lands so good to trade? A, very liquid, and B, you can trade up. Very few cards in standard will you be able to trade into, let's say, a modern staple of equal value. Like for a Death Shadow, not many people are going to trade you a Death Shadow, which is around $8, $10 for any card in standard because they understand that Death Shadow will go up in price, minus a reprint, of course, and the standard cards will have a life it only has the life that it is in standard. Then 95% of cards will, will drop to oblivion. So trading up is one of the keys if you want a better trading trade binder. And that's very hard to do with standard cards. Now people will trade for land in play sets. And if someone wants to trade for a single land, you can charge them a premium. But typically I trade them in play sets and I can trade them up to something like, let's say, a cheap shock land, right? You could trade four of these into a shock land. Or let's say Sun Petal Grove is not like the ideal one. It's the ideal one for you to have right now because it's the cheapest. And should the meta shift at any time and Sun Petal Grove be in meta, the green white be in meta, then yes, it's going to be the most expensive one. It's going to go from two to six dollars or even seven dollars. So I like Sun Petal Grove the best, but it's more of a long-term kind of a little bit of a gamble. I wouldn't say it is a tremendous amount of a tremendous gamble. So these lands are very easy to get to right now. You can also buy the M versions. I believe it has like M11, M13. There's a bunch of core sets where this card was featured in. So even those will be good because standard players just want the easiest available copy. So maybe they maybe you can match those. I do know I like I like when my cards match a certain set. I've always appreciate that. These are highly tradable. You can trade them up into modern staples. You can trade multiples. You can trade them in fours play sets. And that's one of the keys is having good quality cards that people want. And it's kind of like, hey, you're the dude who always has the lands I need. You will have the opportunity to trade for other cards in that person's binder where previously that person won't show you his or her binder. Because they don't, they don't need anything from you. You don't have anything that they would want. That makes you more popular and that makes you, the more binders you look at, the more opportunity you have to trade up. So lands have always been very good to me. I typically buy them online for the cheapest price possible when the set releases, especially if it's reprinted. If it's a land that's already been in circulation, I'll buy those copies, that the, the older copies first, and then I'll trade them like hotcakes into shock lands or even fetch lands. Some of the cheaper fetch lands, you might be able to trade, especially the drowned catacomb, you might be able to trade four of those for even like Khan's fetch land, which would be a fantastic deal for you. And people do it because convenience, right? Convenience, convenience, convenience. My local game stores, they no longer open boxes. Uh, opening boxes is uh, not the best. I've been calculating ways that a store can make money because I'm opening a store soon and opening cracking boxes, unless you get the boxes early, which some people do, unless you crack them early, which some people do, and sell them online, it's not going to be good. Eventually, you're just going to lose so much value. Uh, your expected value is always not uh, super high. For the recent boxes, recent boxes have been very different from in a strat or older boxes, which were good value at the time. Now they're just not going to hold. I don't expect Battle for Zendikar to hold value. I don't expect Kaladas. I don't expect any of these recent sets to do well or to have a box over a hundred dollars, unless there is something I'm missing in the next few years. 
So lands, yeah, lands, uh, accumulate them in play sets, accumulate them in matching set symbols, and then trade them away into fetch lands, shock lands, death shadows, whatever you want. Because four of them, typically a smart trader will not trade one card worth $10 for two, four cards worth 250 That's a very bad trade. That's a very, very bad trade. It's a great trade for the, whoever's trading the four cards into one card of equal value. But in this case, they will do it. And that's where you have the benefit because now you're, let's say you buy the card online for, this card has gone up recently. You buy the card online for 250, right? And you can trade it away for 450. And you can trade a play set away for $18. Well, your $10 investment, cash investment has now become $18 a trade, which is an 80% increase in trade and you can trade up. You can trade it for an $18 card. Easily, easily if that's land, because when people need something, they need it. And you will also have other opportunities. I'm not gonna go into details about it, but you can probably connect the dots. If you are a smart trader, what you need to do is you need to see as many binders as possible. And from those binders, you can decipher, okay, wow, this is, a Luliana of the Veil. Hmm. I need to get this card off him, but he only really wants my lands, so let me trade it into something else. It's a lot easier when someone desires something of yours to make a deal happen than if they really just don't need it. So if it was, okay, I'm trying to get rid of these cards and I would like that Luliana of the Veil, most times that's going to fail, especially if those cards are in standard. But if the other player's like, yeah, I need this place of land, I need this place of land, and I need this one, all right. And then you just have to give them like another modern playable, maybe $25 worth, and you get your Liliana Veil, which is $80. The math works out, and that's how I got all my shock lands and fetch lands. I own a lot of them, is I traded the Drowned Calcombs times four. I bought the Drowned Calcombs online, let's say for five bucks, right, 20 bucks which actually was cheaper because I, I don't buy this version. I buy with cheaper versions. So let's say I buy the for $5. In this case, we're going to take $5. It cost me $20. I can trade this for $7.50. I probably can even trade it for $8 depending on how many people need it. I can trade it for $32. It means, means I can get two shock lands or pretty much, or even like a fetch land from Eternal Master, no, from Modern Masters 2017, which is fantastic. Very few cards in standard can you group them up together and trade up. That's the key here. You're grouping them in a playset and you're trading up. People don't want to do that unless it's land. If it's land in standard they need, they're more than happy to do it. And not only can you do that, you can package the deal. You can package this playset and that playset of land and then give them a modern card or more standard cards, I guess and go for that Liliana the Veil. I've seen and I've traded for Liliana the Veils this way. Now, if you're trying to trade standard into modern, very difficult to do without a premium, but if the standard cards are land, you can do that easily. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.